With those in hand, let's return to our equation. So we have this. And now we have a way to approximate derivatives. Let's start with the, the spatial derivative. And I just want to point out some notation here. So we're going to use a second order, um, we're going to use a second order derivative uh, here. And so uh, second order spatial derivative, right? So using our central difference approximation, that's going to be something like um, Something like that. So going back to our domain that we broke up, right? Let's look at what a point, the point x0 is. And let's assume for the time being that these are equally spaced, because it'll just make things simpler. We're, we're going to relax that assumption uh, a little bit later in the class. But for now, let's assume that these are equally spaced. So if they're equally spaced, if this is delta xi, then so is this, the distance between the, the, the evaluation points, right? So if this is delta x1, then so is this delta x1. And of course, if they're equally spaced all along, this is, you know, you can remove the subscript altogether so that this is just delta x, right? So a point x0 plus delta x is just x1. Right? And so another way to evaluate this would be, uh, you know, if we wrote this for um, any point xi in the, in the domain, this would be p evaluated at x of i plus 1 minus 2p xi plus p of xi minus 1 all over delta x squared. And because of the, it gets a little clunky to carry around the functional dependence uh, of this, we're, we're going to simplify this even a little further. And we're just going to say, instead of saying p uh, is a function of x i plus 1, we're going to use the shorthand notation p i plus 1 minus 2 p i plus p i minus 1 all over delta x. Right? So these are all equivalent. This is just a shorthand notation. The subscript p of i plus 1 implies p at evaluated at the position x i plus 1. Right? So we'll use a subscript for the spatial term. And then later, we'll add a superscript for the time term. Now, we're not going to worry about the time derivative just yet. So let's go ahead and plug in this approximation into this equation. And let's write out a few terms. Right? So remember, this is a summation. So let's, let's write out a few terms of the summation to get a feel for what it looks like. Probably best to go to a new page. So writing out a few terms of the summation, again, using our subscript notation, I'm going to factor out the delta x squared. I'm also going to distribute this minus sign into the finite difference approximation, right? So 
I'll, uh, let me write it out and then I'll show you what I'm doing here. So we have P1 plus 2P0. I'm sorry. We have um, we have P1 minus 2P0 plus P minus 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to distribute this negative sign into the, the stencil over here, right? So I'm going to make that a plus, that a minus, plus, minus. Okay? So that's the first term for the zeroth grid block. Now, never mind that p to the minus 1 doesn't really exist, right? This, is, this would be 1 to the left of our domain. We're going to use this later to implement some boundary conditions, so we'll leave it there for now. Let's write out another term. Again, distributing the minus sign. So there's a lot of terms in between. We'll write out the last few as well. All of that's equal to zero. So that's the whole summation spread out, right? Written, writing out all the terms. Again, never mind that there's not really a p minus one nor a pn. These would be, these would be off of the edges, right? So our domain that goes from zero to l has been broken up into x0 to xn minus 1. Therefore, you know, x minus 1 would be off the domain. Likewise would xn. Right? So never mind that for, for the moment. We'll, um, those will be. Uh, Eventually, uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking at those as to how we apply a boundary condition. Looking at this summation, though, I hope that you can recognize that we can rewrite this as a matrix equation, where we have something like This is just a diagonal identity matrix. Or I guess I should just, just use the dots to here too. All right, so these are all zeros. So that, that should be self-evident by just collecting all these all, all of these um, partial derivative and time terms, right? That's going to be then plus a matrix times the p's, p0, And that's going to have the structure of this stencil, okay? So it's going to have the structure again, never mind there's sort of a fake minus one out here. And 
again, down here at the bottom, you'll have something like that. And again, there's sort of a fake minus one here. So in, in order to sort of take care of the fact that we have this kind of fake minus one here, if we, if we could go back up and look at this first equation uh, and, and you know, sort of look at, look at this term, uh, you know, two P zero minus P minus one, okay. Um, we can factor out a P zero, so we'd have P zero two minus P minus one over P zero, and we'll just write it like that for now. So we're gonna we're gonna replace this term here with two minus P minus one over P zero. Now keep in mind that this P zero is gonna disappear uh, when. On, on this term because it's in the denominator and when you when you multiply this row vector over here times that then that term would would actually go away um, th this will be this will be handled later it's going to fall out when we apply the boundary conditions so we haven't uh, talked about how to apply any boundary conditions here and this sort of crazy notation is, is going to fall out uh, when we apply the boundary conditions but um, likewise we, we're going to have something similar here where this term would then be 2 minus p at n over p to n minus 1. So again, for now, don't worry too much about this. Th this is just going to be uh, kind of taken care of in the boundary conditions. So all of that is going to be equal to a zero vector, right? And we're going to call, let's use a different color. Obviously, this is just nothing more than an identity matrix, right? This is what we'll call a solution vector with respect, you know, the partial derivative of the solution vector with respect to time. Uh, and this matrix here for now we'll call A, right? And then again, this is just the solution vector, right? Whereas an understanding is that, you know, this is not a vector in the sense of these aren't directional components of space, but rather this is a solution vector uh, in that it gives, um, it'll give the, the, the solution at each of the discrete points that we used in, in discretizing the integral. So again, rewriting that equation using a matrix notation, we have the identity matrix times this times the matrix A. times the solution vector, and that's equal to the zero vector. Now, okay, so of course we can just re we can rearrange this equation so that we can see the solution, right? Of course, the, the inverse of the identity matrix is just the identity matrix, and, the, and any matrix, any identity matrix times another matrix just gives you the matrix back, right? So really, this collapses to
And so now we have a set of ordinary differential equations, right? So we had a set of partial differential equations, and we discretized in space, and now we have a set of ordinary differential equations. And the, you know th this has a nice uh, matrix solution, right? So the solution vector p um, is just going to be equal to e. Well, let's write it like this: the exponential function, where the argument to that is minus. times some initial solution pressure, right? So this would be, uh, you know, this is the solution. So this is the ODE, and this is its solution. Now, of course, computing the exponential of a matrix is not a trivial task, and so this is not often done like this, okay? Um, but you could, you, you could actually code this up in, in MATLAB or SciPy on, on the right-hand side and then call the ODE solver and use, a, say, a run to cut a solver or something like that. But since we already have a way to approximate derivatives, this case, uh, we, we've only taken care of the spatial derivatives at this point, but let's now look at the time derivatives using our finite differences as well. And so um, 